welcome to the show. Today, we have your money in mind so you can have more of it and with a little extra money and time, help those in need. We'll get to know a man with a plan to help you avoid tax burdens in retirement. We'll see Fit Third Bank's next generation concept in banking and talk to a mortgage pro who can help you finance your dreams. And we'll see the ways your gifts of money and volunteering help provide dogs to people with disabilities. We start with a familiar face from Donato's and the many ways their company is giving back. For the Donato's company, it's not just about making delicious pizzas with those edge-to-edge -edge toppings. No, it's about a lot more. And we're talking about community. And no one knows that better than the Grodys, the founders of Donato's and Jane Grody Abel. Hi, Jane. Hello. <laughs> community, it, it is what Donato's is. So tell us why. Well, first of all, our name means to give a good thing. So it's a Latin derivative, and my dad bought it from a gentleman named Don Potts many, many years ago. And so Grody Pizza, not necessarily <laughs> as cool. So fortunately, he did buy the name, but it means to give a good thing. So it's inherently who we are. Mm. I, I remember being a little girl living behind our first restaurant, and you know, it was my mom and dad talking all the time about going out in the yards and picking up the trash. Right. And, taking care of our neighbors that were literally around our store on Thurman Avenue. So it's kind of been ingrained in us ever since we were little. And you've always given back. And I know you, with the Reeb Avenue Center, that was so important to you and the Cranes to do that. And yet here you are now with a foundation. So tell us how that works. So yes, thank you. We've always given back. And I think it was really, um, the labor of love that Tanny Crane and Allie and a lot of a lot of people, Don Kelly and my right. dad, put into the Reeve Avenue Center, that kind of made us realize that this hub of hope that we're creating there, one, we kind of create it in every store, right? We hire people with um, that need to recidivize. We um, take we hire 14 and 15 year olds, and so a lot of what we do in our restaurant, as well as giving back in every restaurant but we wanted to make it bigger. We wanted to amplify it. We wanted to include all of our franchise partners and align on a core common vision. Instead of going a mile wide and an inch deep, we really wanted to just focus in on what are those three things that can really lift the community up and give them a hand up instead of it just a hand out. And what are those three things? So our foundation's name is Donato's Family Foundation, Love Our Neighbor. Okay. And that's the essence of it, but we really focus on three things. One is housing, one is hunger, and the third is health. So the foundation will be doing what to provide for the community then? Well, we have it just like anything else. We want to make sure that we're providing a point in time when we're all focused on it. So all our franchise partners nationwide are all focused on how do we lift up our community with housing. So the first one is Habitat for Humanity. Oh, great. And so we'll, as an organization, be able to volunteer our time and give back. But also, just as a community, affordable housing, as we all know right now, oh is really challenging, right? Just even be, being able to find a home. And so we really want to lift the community up and just be able to give back into every single local community that we do business by offering that opportunity. So I know we can also help out Donato's, help out the community. So how can we do that? Uh, a wonderful way to be able to help out is when you order online at Donato's, whether it's your mobile app or at your desktop, at the very end, it'll ask you if you would like to help participate in giving back to the community through Habitat for Humanity. So you can round up, uh, you can give a dollar amount, and you can participate with us. And this takes place in what period of time? It takes place from the, it was mid-March up until May 9th. Oh my gosh, so plenty of time yet to help. So then what's the next pillar? Well, another important pillar for us to help our community, and fortunately we get to do it through food, is hunger. So we're working with Mid-Ohio Collective and other local banks throughout our 23 states in order to lift the community up by giving back to the local food banks so that we can feed our community. And that, that'll be done the same way, kind of? Yeah, it'll be done through a roundup, and then the foundation will also contribute to it, and then um, we'll be able to also give in kind also volunteer in the community. So every pillar has an opportunity for us to give food as well, but uh -huh. also our own time. We're investing in our time and talent and treasure. It's so smart. And you're always reinventing like 
cauliflower pizza. Thank you for doing that, by the way. Absolutely. <laughs> it is probably, it is our second highest selling crust right now. Is it really? It is, it is amazing. So I think it's had such a halo effect and people really, I think, surprised that it's as good as it is. But once you try it, oh. I think you'll. I've had it. I love it. It's delicious. Well, it's clear. Donato's means community. Community is very important to Donato's, but I know it's not the only thing important, is it, Jane? It's not. What else is important, Jane? <laughs> Every piece is important. <laughs> I just love that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's 8 a.m. Fried chicken, better with Pepsi. <sighs> Purchasing a home is the largest investment you will make in your life. So this is why you need to call someone who's going to have your best interest in mind and also will have a personal relationship with. Michelle Stropes has been with Fifth Third Bank for, gosh, 18 years. That's incredible. In fact, she did my refi a while back, so I thought it'd be good to catch up, see the new Hamilton Quarter location, and find out what's going on in the mortgage business. Well, it's been a minute. It's been a long time, way too long. Way this, too long. I know. <laughs> this has all changed, though, a lot. Isn't it amazing? It really is. I am so proud of this branch. It's our new, next generation branch first branch in Central Ohio in 10 years. And when they opened this, I will say, being just an old banker, <laughs> doing this long time, uh -huh. I thought, oh, I don't know. And I am loving it. The customers love it. It's allowing the customers to get more of a feel of when you come in. You can come in, have a coffee, borrow a book, and it gives a more comfortable feeling of customer coming in face to face. Because this is a big decision people huge, are making when they're here, right? Huge decision, huge. So it just yes. kind of takes all the little stress down yes. the level. Yes. I mean, who walks into a branch, to a bank, and going, "Oh, gee, I get to speak to a complete stranger about my finances." Right. I'm going to enjoy this. Right. <laughs> right. We want you to enjoy it. Well, yes. I have, and that's why I'm still a customer. And I wanted to talk to you about this market. What's going on right now? I know. This is one of those markets that people are questioning, is it, is it going to be done? Is it still going to be a great market? What are people saying? Great question. So um, I went to a forecast meeting and it was very interesting because I'm hearing the word a lot, bubble. Oh, this is a bubble. It's not a bubble. Oh. Supply and demand. And we're so blessed to be in Central Ohio because it will always be a demand for Central Ohio. We live in such a great city. So why is Fifth Third different to you? I mean, you've been here a long time, Michelle. Yes. Your team has been here a long time, yes. Michelle. Yes. So, yes. so why do you think um, people are responding to Fifth Third in that way? Is it, is it because you do have actual relationships with people? Yeah, so it's nice that you can have a phone number and call someone directly. You can walk into a branch and talk to someone directly, not calling 1-800 numbers. So why is it that you, number one, like being in, in mortgage lending, or why is it that you've decided that Fifth Third has been your home for so long? First of all, I have to say, I love what I do. I, it's, it's not work to me. I've helped out over 4,000 customers in my lifetime with, wow, yeah. And, and you still return my phone calls. I still return your phone calls. Absolutely. Bless you. Uh, absolutely, yes, <laughs> but it's because it's, it's, I love what I do and I love Fifth Third because of the people. We have great leadership, great leadership in our Cincinnati office. They really do care about the third and the customer. And I think that's very important. And you have awards behind you to back all this up. Yes, this I is do. where you get to gloat a little bit. So tell us some of your awards. Our customer satisfaction awards are at the top of the company. Our volume is top of the company. We just take care of the customer. That's what we do. And we have customers come back over and over again. Because Sean, this is this is your biggest investment of your life. Right. I mean, this is huge. Right. It's very hard to call a complete stranger and say, look at my finances. That's very personal. Oh yeah. Very personal. Right. And so we make sure you're taken care of and knowing you're just not a number to us. We care about what's happening here. 
and it shows, and that's why people do stick with you. And that's why when I call, I say, will you pick up lunch? Because you know my finances. <laughs> no. And I always do. Yes, you always do. I always do. No, yes, I appreciate yes. it. So people are right now considering maybe refis or new construction. I know there are a whole bunch of different categories that you can provide lending services for. So what are some of those? The biggest is our construction programs, our physician loan programs, which are amazing for those first time home buyers for physicians our conventional loans, our um, down payment assistance loans that uh, deal with OVA, VA, FHA. We have them all here. So if you have more questions, then please call my, myself or my team and I'll answer all your questions. I look forward to hearing from everyone. People say on the news, oh, this is not a good time to buy. People are very concerned about interest rates. This is a great time to buy. It's still a great time to buy, but I tell my buyers, to when they're pre you have to get pre-approved. Yeah. In this market, you have to be pre-approved. Right. Yes. I bet you've seen some scenarios where people are getting beaten out easily because they're Absolutely. not. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. You just have to be patient. The right house will come along. And when that house comes along? You jump on it and be pre-approved and call me. And you call <laughs> Michelle. Yes, and get pre-approved. It's very important. Yes. Oh, this is a great place. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, Mike, people love to save money. Yes, they do, but it's how they save it is what's important. We don't want Uncle Sam to have any more. Now, you know, that's what I found that most people, when they're planning for retirement, the, there's an old adage, which means put as much money as you can in your 401k, and when you retire, you're gonna be fine. That's not the case, because what happens is there's magic numbers that need to be in each bucket. I try to define retirement in three different buckets. You have a taxable bucket, a tax deferred bucket and a tax free bucket. Okay. There's a magic number that has to be in each one of those. And I can tell you the one that is in the tax deferred where most people save the money is problematic. People don't know or how they just don't maybe plan ahead of time or what? It, it's you just don't even think about taxation and retirement. You think I'm going to finally get to this point. I'm going to stop working. Now I'm going to take all this money out. I've saved all my life. And the next thing you know, government's taking 40 percent of it and you run out of money maybe by age 82, 83. If you make it tax efficient, you might never run out of money. Do you need a certain amount of time, a certain number of years to make that correction? The sooner, the better. Right. But you also have to know, you know where you work, what options you have available to you at, at work, such as a Roth 401k versus a traditional 401k. But normally, I can fix it in six years. I'm so glad you brought up the conventional IRAs, the Roth IRAs, for people that don't know the difference. The Roth, which I think is one of the best investments a person can have, it accumulates tax-free and it comes out tax-free. The problem is you don't get to have a deduction. So when, if you are switching your 401k to a Roth 401k and you're putting $10,000 in, you better plan on paying $2,500 more in taxes because the Roth 401k, you don't have the deduction. Okay, so tell us some examples of people who after talking to you, figured out how much they should be saving and can save. Well, it's not how much they should be saving, it's where they should be saving. Okay. I never work with anyone to say, oh, you need to put so much more money in. It's more, let's reallocate your funds. I had a client who's up in Ashley and they were able to retire actually sooner than what they thought. And we were able to bring them down to a 0% tax bracket wow. by age 67. And they're making, they're bringing in their um, after-tax dollars around $114,000 a year, and it continues to grow every year by 3%, all tax-free. So what's that tax strategy look like? The tax strategy is to make sure you have the right amount of money in the right bucket. So if you have too much money in your 401k bucket, you need to start changing that into a Roth, okay. a Roth 401k. Right. So that's, that's really the key. And when you look at it, I would say to you, a couple who is now age 65, their magic number is gonna be about $250,000. Anything above that needs to get out of that 401k into either a Roth 401k or a Roth IRA. You're kind of like a little Superman, the way you fly in here and help people. <laughs> 
they actually think that sometimes. I, I bet they do. But because it's always like, really, we can do this. And, or I've had clients, uh, another one this week actually said, you know, we want, I just want to retire. It's, I can't take this anymore. And um, his wife said, no, we, we just can't afford it right now. So I put it together and actually gave them an increase over what they were earning now and it's all going to be tax-free within five years. That's awesome. So it's just a matter of sitting down, knowing where your buckets are and what's in your buckets. That's it. And, and it's always just reallocating. It's, it's a puzzle that you're just moving pieces around and you put the pieces in the right picture so at the end of the time that all that money comes out tax-free and the government is leaving you alone. That's awesome. You never know what you don't know, right? Yeah, it's, it, people say, well, because what's going to happen if I ask everybody that's watching today, what's going to happen to tax rates in the future? Raise your hand if you think it's going up. Everybody's going like this. So how I look at that is if you're at a 0% tax bracket and they triple tax rates, what's three times zero? I think it's zero. It's still zero. <laughs> so let them go wild. And it's not like I'm saying to avoid paying taxes. I'm saying pay your taxes now because tax rates are on sale. There's a you know a tax increase coming in 2026. It's already cooked into the books, and let alone whatever else you're proposing. So if you pay it now when you could control it versus paying in the future when you have no idea how high it's going to be, you're much better off paying it now when tax rates are on sale. Well, Mike, you've got the message, and I know you've got a phone that people can call you and sit down with you and be on the right track. So thank you. You're welcome. Oh, if only all our dogs were this well behaved, right? Well, forget about Quint. He's a little camera shy right now. <laughs> but at Canine Companions, they have to be because they are changing the lives of people with disabilities. And today we're here in this beautiful new facility. And I'm with Adrena. Hi, Adrena. Hi, how are so you? good to see you. Good to see Before you. we move on, please bring over a cuddly prop. Absolutely. <laughs> Trio, here. Look, what a good boy. The rest of them stay put. I cannot You're believe so that. Good. Look at that oh. beauty. Hi, baby. Trio. Hi, baby. Oh, you're a treaty. Yes. Talk to us, Adrena, about Trio's all these head. animals that are here today, these dogs. They're here at what stage in their companion development? So these guys are about halfway through their training. They come into us when they're about 15 to 18 months of age, and then we start training them working with them on the commands that our puppy raisers have introduced to them. Um, and then we start training them the task commands that our clients will need from them. So retrieving dropped items, tugging open doors and drawers, tugging off gloves, doing those sorts of things, turning on and off light switches, and for some, pulling a manual wheelchair is an important task that these guys do. So we have about six months to train them and these guys are, they have about three months left in their training. Now I know we have all labs here. Yes. Is You have labs and also golden retrievers? We do, we uh -huh. have some golden retrievers and then we cross the two. So my guess is, and I'm not sure, but my guess is we have mostly crosses in this group. And why is that? With our breeding program, what we've learned over the years is we have a lot of luck with um, the qualities of both labs and goldens. Um, so putting those two breeds together, we get the best of exactly what we're looking for from our dogs. The temperament, the intelligence, yep. and they're not eating shoes and purses <laughs> and things like my dogs do, apparently. Um, not when they graduate, no. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's the plan. <laughs> but they start as puppies. They do start as puppies. Um, our puppy raisers, who are amazing volunteers, 
take the pups when they're about eight weeks of age and work with them housebreaking crate training. They have them from the time they're about eight weeks until they're 15 to 18 months when they come into us and our volunteer puppy raisers donate their love, money, and time to make it possible for us to do what we do and then additionally provide the dogs free of charge. Oh my gosh, and you've been here a long time. You love this. I do. You? Oh, it just must, it I has do. to bring you so much joy. It does. I've told so many people, I just can't imagine doing anything else. Oh. I, I couldn't leave at the end of the day. I'd, <laughs> I'd be on that mat right there laying next to them. <laughs> well, we're anxious to find out more. This is a special place. We're in New Leash Hall in the beautiful campus of Canine Companions, and we are with a puppy raiser by the name of Mark Trainer. ironic enough. Uh, <laughs> and who's your buddy? Uh, this, this is Humphrey. That's Humphrey. Hi, Humphrey. Humphrey's, Humphrey is 14 months old and then a the volunteer puppy raiser. When did you get Humphrey? I got him at eight weeks old. Humphrey comes in, and what's your responsibility? Our responsibility is to teach him 30 to 40 commands. Wow and uh, to love him, give him a good home, socialize him. He goes to church with us, he goes to restaurants with us. I think Any, most, anywhere we go, he goes with us. Most people watching are going, oh my gosh, that's so wonderful you're doing this, but oh, your heart when you finally have him ready to go. When he's ready to go, it's hard to give him up, Sure. but you know what he's going for. What and, is that moment like? Uh, when you get to hand the leash over to the person that really is needs this dog and it's gonna fill their life, there's no words for it. You cry, they're crying, oh. and but it's just such a great feeling. And you do this all completely volunteer? Yes, it's all the volunteer work. How did you start this? My wife, uh, when we had the young children, they were in a Boy Scout meeting and they did a presentation in a Boy Scout meeting with the dogs. And she came home and said, I know what I want to do after the kids leave the house. Oh. And so how we first picked it up is uh, my son needed a service project his senior year in high school. So uh, they did a co-raising of the dogs and that was his service project this senior year. What would you say to somebody who's watching and saying, I wanna be a puppy raiser? Oh, it's just a great feeling. It's a lot of work, but it's a great feeling to know that you position the dog to be a use for someone. Because of all the hard work, people like you. Mm. Thank you for Thanks. that. grill for one hot dog? Seriously? Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. <sighs> Today we continue our experience with Canine Companions, an organization that leads the service dog industry so clients with their dogs can live with greater independence. This organization provides service dogs to adults, children, and veterans with disabilities and facility dogs to professionals working in healthcare, criminal justice, and educational settings. Yesterday, we met puppy raiser Mark Trainer. He volunteers his time with the organization. And today, we find out how much time he puts into training his current dog, Humphrey. You'll also meet Josiah Manning, who's now fully independent because of the help of his service dog, Kylo. How many hours do you think you put into that? Usually an hour, a couple hours a day. Of intense, we're gonna learn no, these commands. not intense, yeah. but you spend 15, 20 minutes on a command, and then throughout the day, you just use it as you're with the dog. I, I mean, think it's amazing. You're not getting paid for this. This no. is from the goodness of your heart. Yes. You're a volunteer. Humphrey, sit. Humphrey, sit down. What a beauty. Sorry. No problem. So yeah, this is volunteer. And what would you say to anybody who thought maybe this is something they'd like to volunteer to do? Oh, it's absolutely great. The feeling you get at the end, nothing replaces it. 
So we met the puppy raisers who bring animals like Kylo to a place like this. This is one of the guest suites, and this is where someone like Josiah might be matched with the puppy, the dog in this case, that would change your life, right? Correct. I know that Canine Companions does match individuals with more than 65 disabilities to find that perfect match. And for you, what, what different limitations did you have and how has this changed your life? So my physical limitations really affect um, one side of my body and then my lower extremities. So my, do my dog, for me, is essentially my arms and my legs. So if I can't reach something on the ground, he'll get it for me. If I drop something and it slides underneath my bed at night, which unfortunately happens sometimes, um, he'll crawl underneath my bed and get it for me and jump up in my bed and bring it up to me. Josiah, what has this done for you and your independence? Kylo allows me to be completely independent throughout my daily life without having to ask somebody else for help. You and Kylo have been together for a bit here. How long? Yeah, we've been together for almost five years. Now, when you got Kylo, uh, you were in college at that time? Correct. I was uh, getting my master's degree at the Glen College, um, in mas a master's in public administration. And when you're trying to navigate around a college campus, that can't be easy. So did Kylo give you a new outlook on, on what it meant to be a student at Ohio State, right? I would change that a little bit and say he empowered me to be a completely independent student because instead of having to wait for somebody to come along and pick up a piece of paper or a pencil that I dropped, I could, he helps me pick it up and I just keep moving on throughout my day. You know, it, it amazes me and yet I think it's incredible that these dogs are provided at no cost to the individual. Would it have been cost prohibitive for you? had you not come through Canine Companions? Oh, absolutely. Um, for somebody with an analytical thought process, all the time and effort and skill that's put into putting these dogs together, there's no way that a lot of people with disabilities could even come close to being able to obtain it without um, the way or Canine Companions is structured. It's incredible, isn't it? What they do here is just, it's all from the heart. Yeah. Yeah, what would you Helping tell? other people. That's just it. What would you say to people? Because I know they do need volunteers periodically, and, uh, and they, those puppy trainers who bring a baby Kylo up to a, a grown Kylo, yeah. are pretty special people. They're very special people, and I would say if you're thinking about getting involved, um, come out to the center, uh, schedule a time to come out to the center, see if you can set up time to interact with the dogs, and maybe even inquire if you could meet with a graduate, if there would be a graduate that would be willing to talk to you. Because I think once you have a personal interaction with the organization, how it operates, and who it helps, you'll want to get involved as well. I could not say anything better than what you just did. <laughs> Thank you for sharing today. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Hopefully you feel inspired to do more with your money and time and live your best life now. Live happy, live well. Closed captioning provided by the Westlake Communities.